All right, guys, look. We're gonna we're gonna hit the Dave Schultz. So, um, I'm choking. Okay. Oh, you you your neck's fucked up. Yeah. Oh, now is next time. All right. Okay. So, so guys, look, we're gonna snap this guy down. Okay. We got our drill. Push. Snap. Shoulder. My shoulder goes right here, right in the back of his neck. Okay. Don't put weight on his back. If you put weight on his back, like if you're up here, he's man. Do you guys even know what Jesse does when you guys aren't even around? This guy is just a workhorse. He's so strong, he can stand up if I'm here. I try to keep him down, but he just stands right up. It's hard. If you wanna keep the guy down, you gotta put it where his muscles are babies. Look at it right here. This is right where the spot is. I put my shoulder right there on his neck. I've got his chin. I reach around here, look at my, my grip on the triceps. Don't go on the side of his arm. Go deep and then twist it. Okay, I'm not up in the armpit, although I could be, uh, different applications. I'm also not at his elbow point right here. I go slightly above the elbow, right there, okay? So when he tries to pull his elbow in, I've got a lot, little lock on it. I'm not wasting a lot of muscle. My elbow is bent and I've got it here. Now my shoulder, so as I pull this, I push my shoulder there. So now when Jesse wants to stand up, he's like, damn, even if he stood up to his feet like a tripod stance, I can pull and get that guy down, okay? So we wanna learn how to control the position first, so we know how to control it, and then we're gonna apply uh, the old Dave Schultz choke. I'm sure that there was a guy before Dave Schultz that showed him how to do it, so it's not like it was invented by him. You know, Dave Schultz died in 1996, but he's a very famous wrestler, Olympic gold medalist, um, so when you put, he was always famous for, for using this kind of choke. Um, Matt Hughes was able to choke out uh, Hansel Gracie guy. Um, uh, again, you guys, my memory's crap. You guys know what I'm talking about? Almeida. Almeida, yeah, Ricardo Almeida. So he was able to choke him out. Um, there, you can do this different ways, but I'm gonna show you the way that I learned. Um, so there's an anaconda choke where your arm comes all the way through and you lock like this. This is not an anaconda in that way. I'm gonna keep my radius right here on the carotid artery on this side. So I have his chin. So that means my carotid is right there on his neck when you grab the chin, it's right there. Now, shoulder here. I'm gonna pull this elbow. Once I can get this elbow out a little bit, I'm gonna bring my left hand all the way to my right hand. I'm gonna lower my head into the armpit and I'm gonna bring my hands here, okay? So I don't pull the lock to the anaconda side. I keep the lock back here with my shoulder in the back of his neck, okay? The other thing is when you're on that chin and you, you see, imagine I'm holding the chin like this. When my left hand makes the grip, I release the chin and I turn. So everybody do this with your right hand. And then put your left hand right here. Now when you turn your right hand over, do you notice if you grip with your left hand, you squeeze, and you turn your right hand over, do you see what's happening? You have a wrench. There's that wrench idea. And now it really locks. Do you, did you feel what I'm talking about? One more time, chin with your right hand, put your left hand underneath, and then squeeze a little bit with your left hand. So you've got your hand like this, squeeze, and then turn your right hand, and it should be a hard twist, and then grip, and then flex your wrist, okay? And now that you're here, you squeeze, and your shoulder is gonna be piercing the back of his neck, this is in his carotid, and then on the other side, you have your head, much like an arm triangle katakatami. So, I'm on his chin, I reach, I get my tricep grip, I'm pulling. Sometimes people will use the lock to pry the arm and then bring it back. You could do that, but that's not the way I'm showing it today. I'm pulling first, I'm lowering my head, and I bring my hand. So when I grip and I twist, already Jesse's feeling a little bit of pressure, 
Now I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna walk and squeeze. Now, when you, sorry, yeah, yeah. when you see a guy collapse, when you see a guy collapse, you may not be able to finish it because he's conceding the control. He's, he's basically, if he collapses <coughs> when you do this, it means you're strong and you're doing it correct. That's a, that's a compliment if a guy collapses. If he collapses, you might be wasting too much energy to finish it. So if he collapses, I usually tell people, just get on top. <coughs> like he, he's giving you a takedown. But why does it work so much? Because especially wrestlers in a wrestling situation, they don't want to give you a takedown. And even a tough jujitsu guy, if you guys are in a big jujitsu competition, you know, what are people gonna think of him if he just pulls guard? You know, <laughs> it's kind of a joke because a lot of guys have no problem pulling guard. But what I'm saying is, is like, think about it. Like if he's, if he's been working on his wrestling and his takedowns, he tries to like hang in there and be tough, he's gonna get choked out. Teach me grappling, what's up guys? Coach Brian here, and I'm here to tell you about Suplez. Guys, the best dummies in the world for training. You wanna get good at throws, like Jesse, you need a Suplez speed dummy. You gotta get one for yourself. Go to petersongrapplers.com and get your own speed dummy. You know, if a guy kind of rolls over to his back, it's possible that I may not be able to keep it as tight as I need, because I need a little bit of a battle to, to, to finish him. And that's why it works so well in the sport of wrestling. It will work in jujitsu too. All you need is a guy that just won't roll over, okay? So this time, don't collapse. You can tap, obviously, if you need to. But I wanna show that because I, I don't want a guy falling over. So if he falls over, he's being passive, we just get on top. So when I'm here, I grip, pull this on, lower my head. See, this is already a good move. Just come in here and then I'm looking for the leg, okay? So when I'm here, just get, offer a little resistance. There it is, uh, square up a little. Yeah, see I got this guy who's fighting. I put this here, I break my leg to there, and I squeeze. Oh, sorry about that. It fucking sucks. That's a it? good one. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so now the stories are, which I, <laughs> I'm, I've been wrestling a long time. I don't believe the stories. I still don't believe it. I know somebody in the comments like, no, 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 I saw it. And I haven't seen it on video, but the story goes that Dave Schultz would choke people out, put them on their back, and then move them to make them everybody think that they were still still conscious. He would move them so, so that as the dead fish is on his back so that he could pin them. Because, you know, if you choke somebody out and they roll over and they're dead and they're limp, you know, the match is gonna probably be stopped if they notice it. So the, I think it's a tall tale. I don't believe it. I just, I, I used to tell that story. I have choked people out. I used anacondas more than this. I used anacondas in freestyle. Yeah. So in freestyle, I would, anaconda guys, and I would put them on their back. It was way easier because even though they were limp, because it's such a good hold, um, I would just pin them and then I'd let them go and they were unconscious. And sometimes they would reverse it like and take away the fall and then sometimes they would just call the fall and just go, dude, you got pinned, I'm sorry you went out. Um, so that's kind of all I gotta say about that. So let's get back to the technique, chin, tricep, head position. Remember, don't bring this to this. Bring this to this and lock, see that? And lock, shoulder in the back of his neck, carotid artery, squeeze, and you got your head right there on the side. Now I will say this, the choke can be done more like an anaconda as well. So it can be. So it, it can be done like this. So I could be here, pull his arm, bring my hand to here, and squeeze it like an anaconda and get a similar finish. But I don't like that version as much. I would say if you're doing that, like an arm triangle, you might as well push it through and get to your biceps. But to each its own, you might have some uh, short arm, stubby, stocky dudes. Don't laugh. 
there's always someone in the class. <laughs> so if, you, if you're that guy, you're like, Coach, I can't anaconda. How come I can't, I can't anaconda? I'm like, dude, you can't reach your giant biceps. Just go like this. But I would prefer to keep the bone on the neck, kind of like a heel hook. Don't go, with, don't go here, go with the bone. Put the bone on it, just like a heel hook. You know, think of like, man, the Dave Schultz choke is nothing more than a, a neck hook, heel hook on the neck, choke, okay? You guys got it? Do we understand the technique? Don't forget it, ready? Go, help you out. The Dave Schultz choke. Um, I don't know if I've done this one. Maybe I have, I just don't remember. I can't remember much at all around these days anymore. Um, so, Dave Schultz, great wrestler, brother of Mark Schultz, both Olympic gold medalists. Dave is legendary, he's got a shoe named after him. Um, yeah, Dave Schultz is great, and the stories of his front headlock are legendary. Although I have not seen him waking, not waking people up, but moving them around like a puppet just to make the referee think that they're still still conscious. I have not seen that. Comment down below. Let me know if you ever saw it. I think it's kind of like a tall tale. But I'm sure he choked guys out, 100%. So try it. Try the Dave Schultz choke. Like, share, subscribe. All right? Comment down below, and I'll see you guys next time with more great stuff.